Hey there, thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. I've uh, been trying to find ways just to have a change of pace lately. Not always just uh, sitting in my listening room on my throne uh, discussing albums that I've listened to fairly thoroughly, making notes and analysis of the mixes, just trying to change it up a little bit. Did a blind date with uh, Brian Ferry's Boys and Girls. 5.1 SACD mixed into surround uh, and stereo by Bob Clear Mountain, one of my favorite engineers. And uh, this week I'm going to do just like a gut reaction again. I have not heard this album in stereo or surround, although uh, this is my fourth album from Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band. And um, he's stepping up his game. I think I have one or two DVD audios and then they regressed into DVD video, which is lossy, uh, but they're back. And so for Gorgian Not here, we get 5.1 DTS HD Master, uh, 4824. You get Stereo PCM, 9624. You get RO3D. 7.1.4, 11.1, they list it both ways, at uh, 48.24, and then a Dolby Atmos version as well. And uh, I believe Dolby Atmos at this time tops out at 48.24. So for our surround options, we have uh, 48 kilohertz, 24-bit. And uh, to be honest, when I have the option between RO and Atmos, I choose RO. I don't have a lot of like hard science on it, but I do consider it to be uh, a little bit more sophisticated um, audio mixing platform. So I appreciate that they commissioned an RO mix and an Atmos mix that couldn't have been cheap. Uh, this is a Blu-ray Pure Audio. Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band. The Gorgian Knot. I don't know how many of you out there like uh, Big Band, but I sure do. Like I said, this is my fourth uh, Big Fat Band surround album. I also love uh, Gavin Harrison's Cheating the Polygraph. You may know of him from Porcupine Tree, The Pineapple Thief, other projects. He's an amazing drummer. And Cheating the Polygraph, he went and reinterpreted porcupine tree songs in a big band style and um, a very 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 cool uh, album a sufficient mix and it is a DVD video I think so you get lossy DTS but it still sounds pretty good and then uh, Jacko Pistorius I think he has a couple of surround albums but anyway, this is some big band stuff, and of course he's just legendary on uh, bass guitar, and I enjoy this record. So I think I have some other big band stuff in my collection. This is just what came uh, to me off the top of my head. wanted to kind of introduce the concept of big band in surround. I know I mostly cover rock and pop and, you know, a little bit of metal here or there. Uh, but I love classical orchestral music, uh, do love big band, jazz, uh, super eclectic stuff, and uh, got a, a little bit of it all in surround, even uh, like some, some rap and R&B. Yeah, I like to mix it up. Alright, so sometime today I'm going to throw on Gorgian Knot in RO3D, and I'll report back what I think. Alright, so until then, take it easy. Okay, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band, The Gorgian Knot. Uh, initial reaction is wow, wow, wow. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday, I didn't get a chance to um, actually sit down and listen to this uh, till a full day later, but that's life. 
I'm a soldier, I'm a worker, I'm a dad, I'm a hobbyist, I'm a little scattered, <laughs> and random. So yeah, uh, this is the next day. I just now, on my lunch break, got to sit down and listen to The Gorgon Knot in RO3D. It is just exquisite. It's just exquisite. I'm glowing right now. I'm glowing right now. That was incredible. And speaking of incredible, I found myself uh, thinking on at least a couple of the tracks that the music tended to sound sort of um, soundtracky, like a you know could definitely be scored for a movie, like the title track, you know could do well in like a huge western, or like a period piece you know set some time ago, features harpsichord and uh, just a very odd arrangement. Uh, but then there's a, a track later in the album, I think it's called The Incredibles, right? Isn't it? Yeah, The Incredibles. And I thought, man, this really reminds me of uh, the soundtrack to The Incredibles. <laughs> then, uh, come to find out, reading uh, in the book, uh, Mr. Mr. Goodwin worked on The Incredibles, and uh, the track definitely pays heavy homage to that score. And, wow, okay, so I'm going to have to put The Incredibles back on sometime soon and pay a little bit closer attention to the music. And yesterday I had commented on, you know, I wasn't sure how much more big band I had in my collection. And reading over some comments on Quadraphonic Quad, uh, some of the other members, like, associated Gordon Goodwin's work with uh, the BBB and talk about um, some big band music that also features some ginormous drumming, and I'll get to that. Uh, BBB is well worth checking out. I usually listen in RO3D, and it looks like your choices also include some 5.1 options. Lossless on Blu-ray audio. Oh my goodness. Wow. So like, like I just said, um, ginormous drums. The music on this recording ranges from totally bombastic, just absolutely enormous drums that mostly occupy the front of the room but do have this 3D feel, especially on the uh, longer and more complex like tom rolls, the more uh, complex drum fills definitely have a sense that they're not, you know, anchored to that stereo axis, but do have some depth. Uh, there are also mellower songs, there are jazzy songs, uh, particularly sambas. There are songs that push uh, the use of, of time signature. Uh, like there's one called, I think it's called I Always Rush, and it actually starts at a lower tempo and gradually increases in tempo, and that must have been pretty tough for the band to do and to keep it together. In terms of just uh, like still commenting on the drums primarily, the album concludes with a tribute to Buddy Rich, who is um, arguably one of the greatest uh, drummers, well, inarguably one of the greatest drummers ever, and you know, arguably the greatest in many people's opinion. Uh, huge influence on one of my heroes, Neil Peart, and uh, the Buddy Complex, the um, concluding track of the album, does not disappoint. Does not disappoint. I mean, the drummer for this band is a beast in his own right. I mean, just incredible, incredible drumming. Let's call him out. Let's call him out. If I can find the information. What else is going on with this band? I want to find his name. So I'm just like that, blown away. Who's on drums? Ray Brinker is now on my map as just an incredible drummer. And um, let's see, what else do we have to discuss? The mixing. Atmos is called out more specifically than RO3D, uh, like that as in the Atmos mix being produced and commissioned. Um, it was done by friend of Quadraphonic Quad, Steve Jenowick. And who helped him out? Tommy 
by Kari, who I think was also um, involved in the engineering of the recording. Oh my goodness. What what lives up in the Atmos? You get a lot of percussion. You get responsive horns. Like, you'll get horn lines that um, emanate from the front of the room, and then the response comes from the Atmos all around you. You get harpsichord. You get strings on the title track. You get um, gang vocals when they appear on uh, Neil Before Zod, I think. Yeah, the whole band, you know, from time to time, yell out, Zod! You know, sort of reminiscent of tequila. And then, um, there's just an angelic, sultry, soulful, but also contemporary vocal on Summertime. And, come on, who sang that? Let's give her some credit, too. Vanjie Gunn. So, um, incredible band, uh, Mr. Goodwin uh, does a really great job in his credits, uh, calling out his band as just incredible musicians. He writes some very complex, uh, varied uh, charts and expects a lot out of his musicians and gets a lot. Uh, we have a hoedown for big band called Deja Mu, uh, sort of a classical... Um, old-time feel, like I said, in the title track. Jazzy, sambas. Just beastly drum charts. Um, would make Frank Zappa proud. Let's see, what else uh, lives up in the Atmos? Uh, some keys, occasionally. Lots of ambience, of course. Oh my goodness. This album is, is funky. It's uh, contemplative, it's jazzy, it's upbeat, it's mellow, it's extremely well performed. I mean, this thing had my Atmos room where I'm at right now. Absolutely thundering. Uh, made great use of my four height speakers. Awesome use of my dual 12 inch subwoofers back here right behind the uh, seating position. Um, excellent use of the, the ground level speakers. I listened in 7.2.4, which RO3D handled just fine. Uh, you get the sense that um, most of the band is up in front of you, and then supportive elements primarily are encompassing you. So I wouldn't call this like a in the middle of the band type of mix, like sometimes happens on uh, jazzier recordings, you know, in immersive. Um, but it's mixed more like in conventional surround style. Uh, the more main an element is, the more often it's going to be up in front. Uh, so, you know, drums up front, bass is locked in the center front. Um, lead vocal is supported by the center channel, but also um, front left and right channels. And um, usually like your guitar solo lines are going to be up in front. Uh, man, this just works for me. This works for me. I totally recommend this. Uh, sad to see that Amazon wants $90 for it. At the time that I purchased this, I think late last year, the best price that I found was on Big Fat Band's own website. So I will link to that. Unfortunately, the unsigned copy is sold out, and they want uh, around $46, $47 for the autographed copy. If I were you, I would go ahead and grab it. You may find it cheaper, perhaps on deep discount, import CDs, who knows. So look around, um, but I'm going to link the band's site. Um, maybe some of you will feel like throwing them some, some support. This is um, uh, reportedly Big Fat Band's fifth surround album. I have three previous ones. Um, per the liner notes, Mr. Goodwin says that all four of their previous records were released in surround, so that gives me some homework to do. I need to figure out what the fourth one is. I have um, XXL, uh, The Fat Pack, and Act Your Age. I know the other title's called Swingin', Swingin for the Fences, I think? And 
I think I have that. I just couldn't find it when I was uh, digging stuff out for this video. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, my reaction to the Gorgon Knot is extremely positive. Uh, can't wait to spin it again. Uh, fortunately, I have other mix options. Like next time, I can throw it on in Atmos and see if it differs from the RO3D. Um, there's the 5.1 option and high res stereo as well. And also, um, there are three bonus videos, and I just very briefly checked out the one called The Incredibles, and you actually do get to see the band uh, performing the song. So uh, I'll look forward to checking out the other two bonus videos as well, and I noticed in the bonus area of the Blu-ray audio that uh, I think every track for the album has a commentary track. So that could be very, very cool. Um, I did gain some insights by reading uh, Mr. Goodwin's notes uh, from the booklet, and so it could also be like super cool to get his thoughts uh, listening to the commentary track. So this Blu-ray has a lot to offer um, in terms of value. I know sometimes um, surround hounds like myself uh, will drop more than 46 bucks, you know, on like an out-of-print title that doesn't offer this many features. So in terms of value, I think the value is there. Um, I loved the music. Uh, the songs are fun. Uh, they're engaging. There's a huge variety. I feel like the mix is just absolutely nailed. So congrats to uh, Mr. Jenowick and Mr. Vicari. Like, you, you guys just killed it. And I know that Steve G is um, also involved in a lot of other Atmos mixes, uh, so I hope that more and more and more and more of them get released, um, if need be, on like Tidal, uh, through their streaming version of Atmos, but hopefully um, on Blu-ray, because it has just an incredibly high bandwidth, and you get Atmos and even RO3D losslessly up to, um, you know, my receiver can handle 11 channels, and uh, sky's the limit for for Atmos, at least. Like, it'll handle how many ever speakers you tell it you have. There's a limit, but I think it's like in the 30s of channels. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point, uh, just excited. This was super cool, um, particularly like how um, the album hearkened to Count Basie at the beginning, and then um, Buddy Rich at the end. Like, two ginormous influences on, on big band music. And again, put me in touch, uh, in some ways, with my, with my hero, Neil Peart. He was a huge Buddy Rich fan. Uh, he did the Burning for Buddy projects. Those are two good albums to track down, uh, in stereo only, unfortunately but also the uh, Making of Burning for Buddy uh, movie. I think I have that DVD sitting around somewhere. So this has been an incredible experience for me. Uh, Big Fat Band has never let me down when I'm in the mood for Big Band. Um, yeah, it really does it for me. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget, thumbs up, uh, comment, ring the notification bell if you haven't, subscribe if you haven't, share the video if you uh, so feel inclined, and yeah, that's all for now. Just live your best lives, and, and live your lives in surround. <laughs>